Good evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, three-time best-selling author, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and and CEO and founder of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight, we have an amazing special guest by the name of Kimberly Cleveland. A little bit about her. Kimberly Cleveland is officially known as a wife coach. She's an international speaker, blogger, Ladies, min- blogger, ladies ministry leader, and event producer. As a wife coach, she has counseled and prepared women to become amazing wives. Marriage, being a wife and mother, are her passions. Not so long ago, she took a leap of faith and found purpose through her passion and started the Wife University. She coaches wives through the challenges they are facing in their marriage. For those women who are looking to get married, she provides them with the tools and strategies needed to achieve their dream of becoming an amazing wife and having a successful marriage. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Kimberly Cleveland. Thank you so much. So excited to be here this evening. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to the table. It's an honor to be able to uh, bring you to the table to share your wisdom and knowledge with my listeners. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have an amazing bio, Kim. So please tell us more about your entrepreneurial journey. Absolutely. Well, you know, sometimes your pain bursts your passion, and that definitely Mm -hmm. was the case for me. Um, I always knew I wanted to be married, always wanted to be a wife and a mother, Um, just as typical for everyone else. You know, I got my education, uh, went to high school, graduated college, um, you know, started my career path, and then uh, was fortunate enough to um, get married. The unfortunate part is is that I did um, go through a divorce. And my divorce was a great source of pain for me. It actually cut me to the core. And that pain wasn't just about me, but it was also about the devastation that it was causing in the lives around me. It was ripping apart the lives of those that I loved. I was experiencing divorce. My friends, some of my friends were experiencing divorce. Some of the people that I went to church with were experiencing divorce. And so that pain, that hurt, it was not only hurting me, it was hurting my son, it was hurting his father, and it really was um, shaking my faith. Um, And that pain was just too great, and I got tired of carrying it. I, um, you know, threw up my hands and I said, now what? Now what do I do? Where do I go from here? And, you know, the Lord put on my heart, you know, he said to me, you love love. You love relationships and you're passionate about being a wife. So for me, it became a choice. Um, You know, was I going to choose to stay in my pain, or was I going to choose my passion? And it became clear to me that my future was a choice, and it was up to me to create the future that I wanted, and that it was up to me to, to choose to pursue my passion. And again, because of my choice of birthing my passion through my pain, I started the Wife University and then my entrepreneur journey began, and I became the wife coach. And that's why it's so important for us and for listeners that are listening that we embrace the pain because if you would have gave up in the middle of the pain in the process, you would have created these different enterprises that you've built now, you know. And so it's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's always a reason why we go through everything that we experience in life. Absolutely. And a lot of times we go through things not just for us, but for someone mm-hmm. else. Yes, yes. You, I couldn't have said it even any better because that is so true. That most of the time, if not all, Kim, we are experiencing things that help somebody else. That is so true. Yes, I firmly believe that. So you are known as the wife coach. So please tell us more about your passion. Absolutely. Um, like I said before, I truly believe in marriage. I know a lot of people have given um, up hope on marriage. 
And that's because when we look around, we don't really see a lot of successful marriages. But I do believe that marriage is one of the greatest institutions that was, that was divinely created by God. And marriage is about purpose. You know, marriage Mm -hmm. was created to produce life when done correctly. Marriage Mm -hmm. is the foundation of family and the foundation of community and the nation. And so I want to help, you know, women to have successful marriages and to become amazing wives. I want to help stop divorce and help create those successful marriages. I want to help single women prepare because I believe preparation is the key, giving them the necessary strategies and tools and skills to become amazing wives and also to help wives navigate the challenges that they may be facing in their marriage so that they, too, can have a happy, healthy, successful marriage. I love that. And, that's, and I just want to thank you, Kim, for creating that space for people, for people who are married and for our wives to be able to um, – you know, be able to be vulnerable and be able to get the help that they need so that they can continue to be a better wife, right? So that's so important. Absolutely. You, know, you, you want, you want, when you walk down the aisle, you make a commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. And you are closing those gaps to let them know that it will, it, it will work and it can work. Right. Absolutely. Not to give up and not to lose hope. It is challenging. It is work. But on, let me tell you, marriage is so worth it. It is so worth it. So to all of our listeners out there, it's worth it. It is worth it with the right person, right, Kim? <laughs> Absolutely. That is, that is key, too. Yes. Just like when you're interviewing for the job, it's key to get the right personnel. You know, not only do you need to have the necessary skills, but it's also about being the right person and the best fit and the best personality for the team. You're, that is absolutely correct. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So what's some advice you would give? What is some advice you would give to new wives that are listening? Well, for those new wives, I would tell them never to forget that marriage is a ministry. Um, ministry mm-hmm. or ministry, um, you know, some people think that that's a religious word. It simply just means attending to the needs of someone. And so in marriage, of course, that's your spouse. Um, we all know that it's not good um, for man to be alone. We know that. And so... Mm-hmm you know, God knew that man would need, have some needs and he would need someone to help attend to those needs, not just physical needs, but emotional needs, you know, um, psychological needs. And so it's important for new wives to never lose focus of that, that marriage is a ministry and that when we get married, we make those vows and promises to exclusively be there um, on this journey with someone else to meet those needs. Um, and I believe that marriages fail when we don't um, keep that in mind and don't keep that as a primary focus. Marriage is about purpose, and it's about ministry. And I always tell new wives, hey, you want to affair a proof your marriage? Then focus on meeting the needs of your husband. You know, just as the wife is supposed to minister to the husband, the husband is also there to minister to the wife. I love that. So marriage is a ministry. Make sure yes. you're purposeful in the ministry and focus on meeting the needs of your husband. So, you know, I know we have people that are listening that might be going through their single season. And, you know, with single people, when they're going through their single season, they could be discouraged, might have some doubt, and they're just, but they're desiring to be married, Kim. So what what are some strategies or advice you would give to uh, listeners that are in their single season right now and they just, you know, they want, they want marriage, but, they, you know, they're going through some different Seasons, because everybody, you know, you the season for everything. So can you talk more about that? And Absolutely. I would definitely say if you're a person who was like me, who definitely knows that you want to be married, you feel like you're called to be a wife in the season of being single, I would say first, know who you are. Um, it's important for you to know who you are. You can't ex- expect to be in a relationship if you don't know who you are and then it don't, can't articulate what you bring to the table, and what you're expecting of someone else. And you don't really know what you're expecting of someone else unless you clearly know who you are, what your values are, what your beliefs are. I also believe that during that single season, that's the time of preparation. Don't wait until, you know, the ring is on your finger and then start saying, okay, well, how do I do this thing? No. While you're single, you need to be preparing. Colin Powell said there's no secret to success. You know, success is a result of preparation, 
hard work, and learning from failures. And marriages fail because we don't prepare. We invest in our education. You know, we, we go to high school, that's 12 years. We go on to college, that's four years. Some of us go on to get our masters, our PhDs. But we don't invest the same amount of time, effort, and training when it comes to marriage and preparing to be a wife or preparing to be a husband. And, um, you know, I, I firmly believe that this marriage institution was divinely created by the creator, by God, right? And mm-hmm. one of the things that God dropped on me was that he says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. What that said to me was that, you know, man didn't just go out and find a woman and then make her a wife. He found a woman who was already a wife. If she's already a wife, that means she's put in the work. She's already put in the preparation. And so when he sees her, he's like, ah, that's someone who I want to be my wife. And that's because she's put in the preparation. So, again, I would encourage those single women in their um, season of singleness to be preparing, you know, be working on those things that typically causes divorce or causes marriages to fail. Be working on your communication. Be working on your finances. You know, become a good problem solver um, because life is going to throw curveballs at you. So, and again, learn to serve. Learn, work on, you know, ministering. So that's the advice I would give um, women who are going through that single season. Why don't you think people don't prepare for, for that? Why do, why do you think that they don't do because that? I mean, not, or, right. I, I don't think it's really a focus. I think in our culture we're really driven on, you know, hounding in that education, education, education is the key. And it is. But we also have to prepare for one of the greatest roles that we'll have, and that's being a husband and being a wife. Because, again, this marriage thing is supposed to be forever. And so you've got to put in the work. It's not going to come intuitively. It's not going to come by osmosis. And so don't jump into it thinking, okay, I'm going to jump in the pool, and then I'm going to learn how to swim. You're going to drown. No, you need to, you know kind of work your way up to it. You've got to train. You've got to prepare. Um, So just like with anything, and I don't think that we necessarily focus on it. We think that, oh, we look around at the relationships, whether it be our parents or what we see on TV, and we think that that's how it works Um, or that, again, we'll intuitively know how to do it, but it just doesn't work that way. And I I, I know I've had people say, you know, I've heard in different, you know, interviews and stuff, and I, I want to ask you this question, see what your thoughts are, Kim. Do you believe that mm-hmm. every married, do you believe that every married husband is a husband and every married wife is a wife? Do, do you believe that? Absolutely not. And that goes, just goes back to, again, have you prepared? Do you have that focus? Mm-hmm. Just because mm-hmm. you put a ring on it and that you now have a title does not make you a wife or does not make you a husband. You know, if he mm-hmm. can't address your emotional needs, if he you know, and I tell people all the time, just because he's a good provider doesn't make him a good husband. That just makes him a good mm-hmm. provider, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, so these mm-hmm. are the things that you have to be looking at. What makes a good husband? What makes a good wife? You've got to know that, and then you've got to become that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to know it, and you have to become it. Love those kids. Yes. Love those. So that leads me to the divorce rate. So why do you think the divorce rate is so high, and what are some programs you plan to put together in the future to close this gap? Because this is a pretty big gap. Absolutely. You know, the divorce rate is, you know, high, 50%, 60% of marriages, but yet people are getting married every year in droves. Um, but in the, same, in the same sequence, people are getting divorced in droves, you know. Um, it's mm-hmm. becoming much more common, not just one divorce, but two divorces or three divorces. And, again, I go back to it's all about preparation. It's all about enlightenment and knowledge about what it takes to make a marriage be successful. Even those people who are married and haven't gotten divorced, half of those marriages are not successful. They're just two ships passing in the wind, you know. And mm-hmm. so it really just goes back to a lack of preparation. And the other thing I believe is not healing from past pain and heartbreak because a lot of times we um, don't heal. And so we bring that pain and we bring that baggage and we bring our trust issues into the marriage. And then we haven't become whole and happy and healthy. And then that is to the detriment of the marriage. And so Mm -hmm. some of the programs that I've created are 
um, how to be a good thing. You know, I, I take women through steps of what it means to be a good thing, what it means to be an amazing wife, some of the skills that they need to start honing and working on. I also um, have a program, Healing from Heartbreak, and then also for those people who have experienced divorce, you know, helping them to find hope and healing after divorce so that they can go on and still be successful. I just want to commend you for creating those programs because, you know, uh, you don't find many um, people that have created that type of space, you know, for, um, you know, people who have gone through divorces and, you know, wives who are there in there teaching them how to be a good wife and things like that. So I just want to commend you for creating this space, Kim, because I think it uh, definitely will continue to help and continue to close that gap because, you know, people are really getting divorced over small things. Can you can you speak on that a little bit? I, you know, just di- small differences, right? Do you agree? Right. I, I do agree, but those small differences over time can be big issues. And, and a lot of times, it's a lot of small things that build up. And so it just becomes one layer on top of another layer on top of another layer that eventually becomes the straw that breaks the camel's back. And so that's why mm-hmm. I say it's so important especially when we know, you know, the top three, the top five things that cause divorce. We have to Mm -hmm. focus in on those things. And it has to be just that, a focus. If you say you want to be married, if you say you want to be a wife, if you say you want to be a husband, then, again, you've got to put in the work, just like you did for that education, just like you did for that career. If you want it to be successful, you've got to put in the work. And once you get on the, the ring on your finger, that's really when the work begins. It's not over. It's not done. And I always tell wives, you've got to continue to, quote, unquote, keep getting those CEU credits. You've got to always be looking to improve yourself, always be asking yourself, your spouse and yourself, what could you do better? Um, you know, what could we do to be more successful? Because, again, you talked about seasons. Even in marriage, you're going to go through seasons. And so you're constantly going to have to be adapting and changing and be flexible because you're both growing. You, you should never be the same. You should never get comfortable. And so you should always be looking to evolve and take your wife game to the next level. So what are some questions you think for, for listeners who are listening that they should – because a lot of people don't want to ask the hard questions, which create a lot of problems later, right, like the finances and the credit right. score. So we talk a little bit more about that because sometimes people don't want to have those – they don't want to have those conversations before they walk down the aisle. Right. And I always say, would you rather have the hard conversations before and find out what you need to find out, or would you rather have the conversation, hard conversations later and then me go into a divorce? Um, because I've been through that Mm -hmm. devastation, and I want to tell you, you don't want to go through that. So don't be Mm -hmm. afraid of the hard conversations. And and actually, that's one of the programs that I'm getting ready to release is having the hard conversations. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Whether you're having the hard conversation as a single person and you're interviewing, because I strongly, you know, suggest that you Mm -hmm. interview. You know, you have to. Just like if you were going on a job, it's an interview. It doesn't have to be like you have them up on the witness stand, but you do have to ask those hard questions, as you mentioned, Ashley. And the same thing Mm -hmm. when you're married, you have to have those hard conversations. And communication is a skill. That's another thing that's just not, you don't intuitively just become a good communicator. You've got to work at it. And there's the communication is so many things. It's the tone of your voice. Um, it's your, mm-hmm. your hand gestures. It's your body language. It's what you said and what they think you said and what they heard and then how they responded to what you said. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's complicated. <laughs> it, it, it takes skill, you know? Yes. And so, yes. you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Have the hard conversations because let me tell you, too, I don't think that if I had had the hard conversations in the beginning, I would have gone through a divorce. You know, one of my re- divorces was a result of my husband didn't tell me that the house that he brought me home to, you know, I thought he was my prince bringing me home to a castle, was in foreclosure. Mm. So you brought mm. up finances. We didn't even talk about that. That came up, mm. and I found out about that because the ladders were just stacking up from the bank, and I'm like, what is this? So, yes, Mm -hmm. you have to have the hard Mm -hmm. conversations. And it's nothing wrong with having the hard conversations. That's where, 
you know, you find out if you're on the same page. Maybe I'm a spender and you're a, sa- a saver. Um, mm-hmm. That might become a huge problem in the marriage. But if we don't have those conversations, then we don't know. And, again, the goal is for you to match up. You know, mate means compatibility, just like two mm-hmm. shoes. They're not the same, but they're compatible. The left and the right is compatible. They come together for a purpose. You don't know that until you have those hard conversations. So for our listeners that are listening, have the hard conversations. <laughs> all of our ladies, That's all right. of our people that are in your, if you're in your single season, it's the time to do it before you walk down the aisle. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And, I, and, you know, I always advise people, Ashley, have those sooner rather than later, especially for the women because your emotions get involved, Right. And when mm-hmm. your heart and your emotions get involved, if you're not protecting your heart, then wisdom goes out, out the window. So, again, before you get too caught up in your emotions, have those conversations. Again, they don't have to be like you have them on the jury stand, but you should be able to have open, honest communication when you're dating. Yeah, because you want to know, you know, be okay with the results. You at least you know right. before you actually make a lifetime commitment. <laughs> right. And if we find out that we're not suitable, we're not compatible, that's okay. You're a good person. Mm-hmm. I'm a good person. You're just not mm-hmm. good for me and where I'm trying right. to go and what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so that, and that's okay, well, you know. Uh-huh. Let, let's be uh-huh. thankful and, and, like you said, just kind of, all right, that's great, but we're not for each other. And know that now versus, you know, 10 years down the road when you've invested 10 years in this marriage, right? Right, right, right. So, Karen, what are some strategies you would give to listeners who are struggling with healing from past hurts? Because like you said earlier in the conversation, that can affect a lot of people and it can ruin relationships, on you know, and make you miss opportunities and a couple different things if you're not healthy inside out. Right, right. If you're still struggling from pain of past relationship, you definitely want to take the time out to heal. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the best way to heal from one relationship is to jump into another relationship. Absolutely not. Mm, You need to take that time out. You need to take the time to really examine your emotions, examine what you're feeling, um, why you're feeling what you're feeling, and then ask yourself the hard questions of, well, what happened, and how did I contribute to the failure of the relationship? But the main thing that I I always first tell people when they're trying to heal from past pain is forgive yourself, okay? Forgive yourself and forgive the person who's caused you the pain in the relationship because unforgiveness is unhealthy. Unforgiveness only helps you. And, you know, I never wanted to harbor that pain Um, in my heart because I knew it was only going to hurt the next person that came into my life and that it was only going to hurt me and keep me back and keep me in that victim mentality. So, again, forgive yourself for making the bad choices. Forgive yourself for ignoring the red flags or maybe possibly choosing the wrong uh, person or just your contribution to the failure of the relationship. That's first. And then, like I said, forgive the other person so that you can move on and Mm -hmm. and be happy and whole. The other thing I would say to people who are struggling from uh, past pain and who who need to heal is take your power back. That was Mm -hmm. so key for me to take my power back because, you know, we all will, as women, will have and will continue to face trauma and challenges and setbacks in our life, right? But the question Mm -hmm. becomes, will we choose to be a victim or will we choose to be the victor? You know, will we become and stay in this place of victim or will we become a victor over our circumstances? So I always tell women, take back your power. Don't sit there and wallow in the pain. Um, don't be the victim who suffers. Be the victor and become the person who gets on top of their circumstances. And so I tell them, take your power back. You, you have to stand in a position of power. So whatever happened, you can't sit there and wallow in it. You've got to take your power back. Take your power back and forgive. Yes. Those things are so key. So key. So key. Yes. So, Kim, you're doing some amazing things, you know, and you've already pretty much bought the table. But I always ask my guests, how did you create your seat at the table? <laughs> and it really was, like I said in the beginning, just um, birthing my passion from my pain. Um, like mm-hmm. I said, I've 
I, I followed my passion of love and marriage, and I turned my pain of failed of a failed marriage into my passion. Um, I mm-hmm. took the opportunity um, to help others have happy, healthy marriages and to become amazing wives and to help those of, overcome divorce. And because again, that that's my passion. And so I just created the opportunity. I no longer, um, again, wanted to be a slave to my job. I really wanted to have a life full of purpose and full of passion. And that required me to sit down and really ask myself the hard questions. What is it? <laughs> that's my passion. And how can I help someone else? How can I find um, purpose? And so once, once that became very clear to me, then I just basically um, took the a- action steps necessary and started this entrepreneurial journey. I love it. You turned your pain into purpose and created your seat at the table. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so we all have, and I know you spoke about this more than once, a process on our journey. Did mm-hmm. failure teach you on your journey? Oh, gosh. Failure taught me that I had to do the work. Um, mm-hmm. It taught me mm-hmm. that um, I do have the power to create the life that I desire. I just have to do the work and seek the answers. It's really that simple. Um, so you taught me that I'm, I'm strong and that I'm resilient and that I'm unstoppable. Um, and so failure is a great um, teacher. It really is. And it's just, again, Failure is not the end of the world. Failure is actually an opportunity for you to learn and grow. And so I always tell people, even, you know, when they say, well, your relationship failed or you went through a divorce, I'm like, that's okay. What did you learn from it? You know? Right. What did you learn from it? It was a lesson, right? It's always lessons. Yes. Yeah. It's always lessons. So what did success teach you? Oh, gosh. Success taught me to be <laughs> thankful and grateful. Um, you know, yes. success didn't mm-hmm. come easy. Success is a struggle. And again, you know, I go back to success is hard work, you know. Uh, our youth and our millennials sometimes just, you know, looking at TV and looking at t- YouTube, they think success is overnight, but it's not. People have put in right. years and years and years when you're just not seeing them at the pinnacle, right? And so right. Mm-hmm. success also taught me that, you know, I didn't do this alone. You know, I had a lot of support and help along the way, um, and I definitely couldn't have done it without the Lord. So, you know, that thankfulness and gratefulness just fuels me to reach back and to help others, um, and rec- it helps me to recognize that this success is not about me. It's about helping someone else along the way. And that's a true successful person is one I always say that reaches back and pulls it forward. That's when you're really, that's when you're a true success, okay, because that was all about reaching back and helping somebody else get there. Uh, yeah. so I love that. So what can we expect from you the rest of 2019, Kim? Like, you know, I've been following you for a while. You've been doing some amazing things, traveling all around the world. So what can we expect from you the rest of 2019? Absolutely. Well, like I said, more webinars. I'm definitely going to be putting out um, how to have the hard conversations, more live events, some small, intimate um, group workshops, um, of course, a conference to empower women to become amazing wives. And, again, that term amazing means startling, impressive, astonishing, um, astounding, um, and that's what the goal is, not to be an average wife, but to be an amazing wife. And so that's the goal. So please support Kim and all the things that she's doing and for listeners that are interested in her services. Definitely reach out to her and, you know, get involved and, and, and per, you know, invest in yourself because it's so important. If that's an area that you feel that you need more improvement on, definitely invest in yourself. So reach out to Kim. She's doing some amazing things. So, Kim, would you please tell our listeners how they can follow and support you on all social media platforms? Yes. I'm the Wife University, the Wife University on Instagram and also on Facebook. And you can also go to my um, website, www.thewifeuniversity.com. So please follow her, follow and support. So, Kim, I would just like to thank you. Thank you, thank you for taking the time. No, of thank very you. Schedule. <laughs> yes, to come to the Thank table you for inviting me and allowing me to be, to be here this evening. So grateful. You are welcome. I just I want to thank you for just being able to share your wisdom and knowledge that you shared tonight with our listeners. And I pray that, 
people have gotten and received a lot of the information that you have shared. And you know what? If you if you want to invest more, please join the Wife University. That's it. <laughs> so thank you again, Kim. All right. Thank you, too. So I would like to give a special thanks to John Schamberger and Tammy Collins Marquis, as well as author Kimberly McLemore. And I would also like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 